Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today, we're going to do this. We're creating a fake fluid effect in Cinema 4D. This video was brought to you by Skillshare, where you can get access to over 25,000 full courses on a huge range of subjects. The classes are project-based and teachers take you through all the steps in creating each project and when you're done, you can share your work with teachers and the student community for feedback and support. We've actually got three CG Shortcuts courses on there now, with new courses being released regularly, covering a bunch of stuff we don't usually go into on YouTube. So if you want to test out Skillshare, there's a link below for a free two-month trial that will give you access to the entire catalogue of courses, including the courses from CG Shortcuts so you can see if it's right for you. Now let's get back to the tutorial. So loads of people on our Facebook group wanted to know how to create this effect, so I thought I'd give it a try. It's inspired by Matthew Buccini's award-winning Egg McMuffin animation. I'll put a link down below to where you can find that, as well as his Instagram account, where you can find loads of really cool artwork. Okay, let's hop into Cinema 4D and see if we can do this. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is make a zigzagging stack of cheese. And we could just grab our spline tool and draw out a zigzag down here, but I'm going to show you another little technique to do this. So instead, we'll come up here and we'll bring in a null, which is just this little dot down here. And now we're going to animate this by hand. So we'll come over to the coordinates tab and we'll stick a keyframe in the X axis and the Y axis. Then we'll go forward one frame and we want to animate it in this direction. So that's the x-axis here. Let's move this 100 centimeters in the x-axis. And then we'll keyframe our x and y position again. Then we'll go forward one more frame. And now we wanna go up in the y direction. So we'll make it go up 10 centimeters and keyframe and keyframe. And then we'll go forward another frame. And we're trying to make a zigzag pattern here. So we need to go back the other way now. So our x-axis needs to be back at zero. And we'll keyframe both of those again. And now we've almost got one full zigzag. We just need one last little section going upward. So let's go forward one more frame. And we need to go up in the Y direction another 10 centimeters. So let's make this 20. And we'll keyframe both of those. And now if we just step back through those frames, you can see our null is traveling along our zigzag. And now we wanna take this section of zigzag and repeat it up this way. And the way we're going to do that is by extending the animation. So we'll right click on our null and come down here to show F curves. And that brings up our timeline curve editor and we can see our keyframes in there. And the way we're going to get our zigzag is by repeating this animation. And we'll start with the animation on our X axis. If we select that and move this out of the way, you can see we've got these options over here where we can choose what happens to our animation before and after the keyframes we've set. And we want the animation in the X axis to do this and keep repeating. So if we go to the after section here, let's just set this to repeat. And now we've got this black line over here. And if we zoom out a bit, you can see that animation has now repeated just the one time. But if we want more than one repetition, we need to change this value over here. We actually want five repetitions. So let's put a five in here instead of the one. And now if we zoom out, there's our five repetitions. Now we also want to repeat the keyframes in the Y axis, but we want to do that a little bit different. So we'll zoom in a bit and we'll select the Y position. This time, rather than repeating these keyframes, so it would go up and down here, we want these keyframes to continue up this way. So if we come over here, we actually need to select offset repeat. And now you can see those keyframes are being repeated up this way. But again, we've only got the one repetition in there now. So let's go over here and also bring this up to five. Okay, now we can close this off. And if we check out our animation, our null goes beyond the original keyframes and we now get five zigzags. So to create our final zigzagging shape, we just need to trace the path that our null is traveling along. So with our null selected, we'll come up to the MoGraph menu and we'll bring in a tracer. Then with our tracer selected, we'll head over to the object tab and you can see here in the trace link, our null has automatically been added. And now if we hit play, our tracer traces the path of our zigzag pattern. So now we wanna convert our traced path into a spline. 
So we'll go over here and right click on our tracer. Then we'll choose current state to object. And that's created a new spline for us. So we can delete that tracer. And if we rewind, you can see we've just got our zigzag spline in here now. But if we zoom in a bit, you can see the edges here are pretty sharp. So the next step is smoothing those out. So we'll go over here and switch to point mode. Then we'll grab our spline and let's just rename that while we're here. Let's call it zigzag. Then we'll come down to our live viewer and hit control A on the keyboard to select all the points. Then we can right click and we'll choose chamfer. Now all we need to do is click anywhere in here and drag our mouse and it'll start to round those points off. And now we've got a nice smooth zigzag path for our cheese to follow. So the next step is to give this spline a bit of thickness. So we'll come up here and we're going to do that with a sweep. So we'll bring that in and we need to plonk our zigzag spline inside of that. And now we need a shape to sweep along this path. And you can use whatever shape you want, but I'm going to use a rectangle. And let's come in really big. If we zoom out, there it is. So we'll just resize this and we're not working at actual scale here. So let's just make it 10 centimeters wide and 80 centimeters high. And now we're going to extrude this shape, which is going to represent our cheese along this path. But before we do, let's just come over here and tick this on to add a bit of rounding to those edges. And we don't need a value too high in here. So I think one centimeter should be fine. So now we have the profile of our cheese and we'll put that into our sweep hierarchy right here. And there you go. We've got our pile of cheese. So now we need to animate this. So we'll come up here and let's just turn our sweep off for a second so we can see our spline. So the plan now is to distribute loads of little points along this spline to drive some MoGraph animation. And to get those points, we'll come up to the MoGraph menu and we'll bring in a matrix. And that's created loads of these little matrix points on the floor here because we're currently set to grid array but we want all these points to follow our spline instead. So let's change the mode to object and the object we'll use is our spline. So we'll drag that into this slot right here. And now we've got these cubes which represent the points of our matrix object attached to our zigzag spline. And we're going to need a lot more of these points. So the first thing we can do is go over to the transform control and we'll just make those cubes a bit smaller so everything's easier to see. So we'll scale these down to 0.3. Then we'll head back to the object tab. And you can see we've only got 10 of them in there at the moment. And that's controlled by this setting down here. So we wanna bring this way up. Let's try something like 400. But now we're getting an issue where they're all bunching up at either end. So to fix that, we just need to change the distribution down here from count to even. And that's looking better. So now we've got a bunch of points we can use for the end state of our animation. So now we just need some points to represent the start. So basically we just need to create some kind of dispenser that will dispense the cheese, which will slowly pile up down here. So let's go back up to the MoGraph menu and we'll bring in a cloner. And we need to clone something. So let's go over here and we'll grab a cube. And if we hold shift with our cloner selected, it should automatically become a child and apply itself, which does seem to be working, but our cube, if we zoom out, is probably a little bit too big. So we'll scale that down, and we could probably make this just as small as the cubes in our matrix object. And that looks fine. So let's go into our cloner, and we also want the count to match the number we have in the matrix object, which if you remember is 400. So let's make this the same. And now if we zoom out a bit, you can see those are cloning up in the Y axis. So we could probably bring them a bit closer together. So down here in the Y, let's bring that right down. So they're really close at about three centimeters. And now they're pretty much touching each other, which is exactly what we want. So now we just need to get this into position. So we'll grab our move tool and move this up to where our cheese dispenser is going to be. Something like that. So now we want these cubes to come down here and inherit the positions of our matrix points. And hopefully it'll look like cheese stacking up on itself. So to do that, with our cloner selected, we'll go back to the MoGraph menu. And this time we'll go to Effectors and we'll bring in an Inheritance Effector. 
And because we had our cloners selected when we brought that in, it should automatically be applied. And the way to check that is to just click on our cloner. And we've got this effectors tab over here. And there's the inheritance effector in our effectors list. So let's go and take a look at that guy. And if we look down here, it's asking for an object to inherit information from. So we want our cloned cubes to inherit the position of our matrix cubes. So we need to use the matrix as our object. So we'll drag that into here. And at first it's actually taken the entire cloner and moved everything down here, but we want all of our clones to morph to this shape. So all we need to do is turn on morph motion object over here. And it looks like they've disappeared, but if we zoom in, all of our clones are now also on the spline here. And we can probably see that a bit clearer if we just hide that matrix object for a second. And there they are. So now if we go back to our inheritance effector, we can use the strength slider here to animate between both states. So if we zoom out a bit, we've got our clones up in the dispenser. And as we slide it this way, those clones move into position on our zigzag. But we don't want them moving all together like that. So to make this look less linear, we're going to come over here and use a fall off. And what we can see here is the fields interface in Cinema 4D version 20 and above. But if you're using an older version, you should still be able to follow along. All we want to do is bring in a linear field or a linear fall off. And we might get a bit of a weird result at first because we need the fall off pointing in the Y direction. So we'll just change this from positive X to positive Y. And now by moving our linear fall off, we can animate the transition of this effect. Although I think we might have our Y direction around the wrong way. So let's just change this to negative Y. So now when we move our fall off, we're starting to get that cheese piling up sort of effect. So we're definitely almost there. Let's just undo that. And we probably don't need our fall off to be so wide here. So let's grab our scale tool and we'll just scale that down. Then we can probably move that down a bit as well. And we'll also grab our cloner. We want the dispenser to be a bit lower. So we'll bring that down as well. Okay, so now we want to animate this. So our clones come down here through our fall off and start piling up onto our zigzag. And I might just bring that cloner down a little tiny bit more. And then with our cloner selected, we'll head over to the transform tab and we can do our animation in here. So tweaking the Y value here will allow us to move our clones up and down. So let's add a keyframe at zero on frame zero. And we're probably gonna need quite a few more frames in our timeline. So let's make this 200 frames long and we'll just stretch this out. Then we'll go forward to the last frame and we want to bring our cloner all the way down in the Y axis until all of the clones are on our spline. And that looks about the right spot. So we'll set a keyframe there as well. Then we don't want any easing on this. So let's right click and show F curves again. We'll hit control A to select all the points here and we'll hit this button here to make them linear. And we can close that. And now if we hit play, we're finally getting our animation. So now we want to use this animation instead of our zigzag spline to drive our sweep. So we need to convert our clones into an animated spline. So with our cloner selected, we'll come up to the MoGraph menu and we'll bring in another tracer. And because we had our cloner selected, our tracer has automatically been applied to it, as you can see down here. But this time, rather than tracing the path created by our clones, we want to change the tracing mode to connect all objects. And that's going to draw a line between each one of the clones, as you can see here. So basically, we've now got an animated spline that we can use to drive our sweep. So now we can use our tracer instead of our zigzag spline. So we'll grab that guy and take him out of there and replace it with our tracer. And now if we turn the sweep back on, we've now got our animated pile of cheese. Let's give it a play. And it's looking pretty good, but it's not quite as smooth as I'd like it to be. Let's go and take a look in our tracer. If we come down here and change the type from linear to something a bit smoother, maybe the B spline. And we probably need some intermediate points as well. So let's change that to natural. And that's starting to look a lot smoother already. So let's give it a play. And that's looking pretty cool. Although if we come up here, 
our dispenser should be moving back and forth as well. So let's do that. We'll pause that. And we need to animate our cloner to move back and forth with our animation. So we'll grab that guy and back under the transform tab where we were animating before, we need to animate in the X direction. So we'll set a keyframe here at frame zero. Then we'll switch over to our front view and zoom in a tad. We need to play this through until we've done one of the zigzags, somewhere about there. And maybe if we just go back a few frames, we probably want our dispenser to be slightly ahead of our animation. So I think frame 16 should work for us. So we'll go over to the X axis here and we want our dispenser to go all the way across. So we'll put hundred centimeters in here and you can see that's now lining up with the end of our zigzag here. So we'll keyframe that. And if we play that back, our dispenser is now following along with the animation. So we want this to oscillate back and forth. So we'll right click here and go to animation and we'll show our F curves again. And we only want to see the X axis. So let's click on that. And we'll just frame this up a bit and move it over here out of the way. And we want to repeat this. So our dispenser is moving back and forth. So to get the options we need, we just need to click on that X axis again. And here's our options again over here. So let's change after. We don't want repeat. We actually want oscillate. And now our curve is oscillating back and forth, but it's only repeating once. So we'll come over to our repetitions and we'll make it oscillate 11 times. And if we zoom this out, you can see that dispenser is now going back and forth 11 times. So we'll close that up and now we'll hit play. And we might just go back to our perspective view to see this a bit better. And let's just get this framed up a bit. Okay, let's try that. And there we go. It's looking pretty good, but there's probably one last little thing we can do to smooth this animation out a bit. So with our cloner selected, we'll come up to MoGraph, Effector, and we'll grab a Delay Effector. Then over in our Delay Effector, let's go to the Effector tab, and we wanna make sure the mode is set to Blend. And that should add a bit of easing to our animation and make everything look a lot more smooth. So let's give it a go. And there you go. You've got your cheese stacking effect and everything's looking nice and smooth. And we might just wanna extend this timeline so we can see this finish. Let's give it an extra 20 frames. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial. As usual, you can download the project file below to save a bit of time. And as with all of our tutorials, if you wanna get your hands on the full render ready project files, which include all the final lighting, materials, and Octane render settings, you can get them from our Patreon page. Big shout out to this month's patrons for supporting the channel and allowing us to keep making tutorials. You guys are the best. Before we head off, I'll just mention we're releasing our brand new Octane materials course next week. So keep an eye out for that. And that's it for now. I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you want to see in the comment section below, or you can leave a like or dislike. <laughs> And don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell icon for more videos and free stuff. Catch you next time.